questions for Dr. William Moss, who joins us from Baltimore. He's the executive director of the International Vaccine Access, Access Center and a professor at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Uh, and Dr. Moss, uh, how concerned should people be who have this vaccine? I have to tell you, I have a colleague, a female who got Johnson & Johnson vaccine on Friday. She has a history of blood clots and she's very, very upset. What do you tell people like that? Yes, thank you for having me. You know, first, I think this shows that the vaccine safety surveillance system is working. Um, we're not able to detect all potential adverse events uh, in the large phase three clinical trials. And so we need good surveillance systems after vaccines receive emergency use authorization or are approved. And so I think this shows the system is working. I think, you know, what the pause is telling us is that the CDC and the Food and Drug Administration want to look into to see whether they can establish a, a true link um, between the vaccine and these cases. Um, and they also want to provide healthcare providers and vaccine recipients uh, information about what signs or symptoms they should be looking for after uh, receiving a J&J &J vaccine. And as uh, uh, these cases have occurred within about two weeks of vaccination um, and also how to manage them. And so I think this raises awareness for people who have received the J&J &J vaccine. Um, should they experience a severe headache or chest pain or abdominal pain, difficulty breathing, swollen legs, any signs of severe blood clots, they should be seeking medical attention. And it's interesting that all six cases out of 6.8 million administered, there are women ages 18 to 48. What does that tell us? the investigators will try to do is see whether these cases of blood clots um, were related to the vaccine or not. And that's not always easy to do outside of a clinical trial. And so uh, one thing that people do will be look to see what the background rate uh, of uh, these types of clotting disorders are. You know, these um, that hundreds of thousands of people have blood clots each year in the United States. And so we need to see whether there's an increased risk. But what this does tell us is that uh, younger women uh, may be at higher risk uh, for these adverse events. And this is somewhat analogous to what we've seen with the AstraZeneca vaccine. This, these, uh, this increased risk of blood clots that we're seeing with the J&J &J vaccine is not happening in isolation. We have seen this, uh, reports anyway, um, of people uh, people getting abnormal clotting disorders after the AstraZeneca vaccine, also predominantly in women. Now, there are a number of reasons why women may be at higher risk. We don't know the pathophysiology yet, um, but it could be uh, an autoimmune type of phenomenon where they produce antibodies that activate the platelets. There's uh, evidence to suggest that with the AstraZeneca vaccine or hormonal differences that place them at higher risk for blood clots. Dr. Moss, um, a lot of people in this country are hesitant about getting a vaccine. Is this going to make that problem even worse? Not just for Johnson & Johnson or with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, I should say, but with all of them, Moderna, Pfizer, are people going to say, oh, see, there was a problem. I'm not going to get vaccinated. I hope that's not the case, but it's very important that uh, the FDA and the CDC are very transparent and forthright, as they have been, uh, about uh, the blood clots, and that they're very transparent as they go forward with the investigation and are honest with the public as they uh, communicate uh, their findings about this. I, again, I want to emphasize that this is how uh, good vaccine safety surveillance works, um, even though these uh, adverse events are very, very rare. Now, I will say we still have a lot of cases of COVID-19 in, the, in uh, the United States, a lot of hospitalizations. So we want to uh, do everything we can uh, to continue to build confidence in these vaccines. But we need to communicate very clearly about what the risks are and what the benefits are. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Dr. William Moss, thank you very much.